case. So let us read it. The case says a 63 year old man comes to the ski resort clinic on a mountain peak. The mountain peak is 14,000 feet. What is the complaint of? He complains of dyspnea. He complains of headache, dizziness and inability to sleep. He was short of breath while climbing the stairs at the lodge. And he noticed that he was breathing rapidly even while he was sitting down. Very important part of the history is that the patient has arrived at the resort yesterday. So it's the just one day history from a sea level town. And he reports no current health issues or medications. And he is also planning to stay at that resort for a week. So here is a 60 plus year old man who has come to a ski resort and the ski resort is at an altitude of 14,000 feet. And here he is complaining of dyspnea, headache, dizziness and inability to sleep. And even he is having shortness of breath and he has ascended to that height only one day back. That is the most important. He is coming from a place where he is staying at the sea level town and now he has ascended to 14,000 feet. Okay, so the question says, what is your diagnosis? Second question says, what is the pathophysiology of the key symptoms? The third question says, what are the changes occurring in the body during acclimatization? If you know the answer, well and good. If you don't know the answer, relax and let's see what is this high altitude sickness and how does how is it going to present? Okay, so what is the meaning of high altitude? First of all, usually no symptoms of hypoxia develop till the altitude of 10,000 feet. Okay, till altitude is around 10,000, even few books say 8,000 to 10,000 feet, there will be no symptoms of hypoxia. Okay, why no symptoms of hypoxia? Because even at a height of 10,000 feet, the partial pressure of oxygen is 60 mmHg. Now, if you recall your oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve, even at 60 mmHg, hemoglobin is more than 90% saturated. That's why I don't see the symptoms of hypoxia. And symptoms, they start to develop above 8,000 to 10,000 feet. So that is why, what is the definition of high altitude? Anything which is more than 10,000 or more than 8,000 to 10,000 is what is called as high altitude. So first we have to define what is high altitude and after what altitude the person is going to develop the symptoms and why. Why? Because till 8000 to 10000 altitude, the partial pressure of oxygen is still maintained at 60 mmHg, which is equivalent to hemoglobin saturation more than 90%. So that's why the person is not going to develop any symptom. Next very important thing is the effects of hypoxia which are developing at the higher altitude, they are going to depend upon three important things. What are these three important things? Level of altitude, whether the person is at 10,000, 15,000 or 20,000 feet high. Second thing is the rate of ascent, how fast the person has ascended to that altitude. Third thing is the duration of exposure to high altitude. Now in this case, the duration of exposure to high altitude is very short. It is like less than one day and what has happened to the rate of ascent? The rate of ascent is very fast and what is the level of altitude? The level of altitude was 14,000 feet in the case which I have put forward. So the effects of hypoxia are going to depend on these three things. Now the stages of hypoxia at the high altitude are going to depend upon the level of altitude. There is a stage of in indifference means there is no symptoms when the person is going to ascend up to 8000 to 10000 feet high, a healthy person with no com comorbidities. Okay? Why? Because partial pressure of oxygen is still maintained above 60 mmHg. Now there is a stage of reaction when the person ascends to more than 10000 feet and up to 15000 feet. So here the partial pressure of oxygen is falling down to 40 to 60 mmHg. Okay. So here the person can get cardiovascular symptoms. Cardiovascular symptoms are going to occur because of the sympathetic stimulation. Like there is going to be an increase in the heart rate. There is going to be palpitations. Okay. There is going to be increase in the force of contraction of the heart. All these will be the cardiovascular system. The person is also going to get the respiratory system in the uh, respiratory symptoms in the form of dyspnea and all that. And then the person can get early CNS symptoms. 
okay so this is called as the stage of reaction which is going to happen from 10000 to 15000 feet now there is a stage of disturbance which begins from above 15000 feet okay wherein the partial pressure of oxygen has fallen down very low to 20 to 40 mm hg and here the person can have severe hypoxic symptoms and the cns symptoms which had begun in the stage of reaction are going to become exaggerated and sometimes the cns symptoms become so much exaggerated that the person may land up with coma and ultimately death of the person may occur so depending upon the altitude we have three stages of symptoms stage of indifference, stage of reaction and stage of disturbance. Now there is something which we should know which is called as acute mountain sickness. Now what is the meaning of the acute mountain sickness? Here the symptoms are going to begin from a few hours maximum within 4 to 8 hours up to 2 days that is less than 48 hours after the ascent. And the pathophysiology of acute mountain sickness is because of two things. One is acute cerebral edema. Why do you think there is an acute cerebral edema? Cause of acute cerebral edema is hypoxia. Okay. Hypoxia is the most important cause. So what, what hypoxia, why is it that hypoxia is causing acute cerebral edema? Because whenever there is hypoxia, there is going to be vasodilatation of cerebral blood vessels. Whenever there is hypoxia, there is vasodilatation of the cerebral blood vessels. So, whenever there is vasodilatation of the cerebral blood vessels, there is an increase in the flow of blood in the cerebral blood vessels. So, whenever there is an increase in the flow of blood in the cerebral blood vessels, there is an increase in the capillary pressure inside the blood vessels. So, whenever the capillary pressure inside the blood vessels is going to increase, there is occurring transudation of the fluid from where to where? From the capillaries to the cerebral hemispheres. So, when the fluid is shifting from capillaries to the cerebral hemisphere, what is it going to result it is going to cause cerebral edema then cerebral edema is ensuing there is an increase in the intracranial tension so what are the features that we are going to see because of the acute cerebral edema the features will be like headache there could be dizziness okay there could be disorientation Okay, then there could be sometimes ataxia, there could be nausea, there could be vomiting and if it has become very severe, then it ultimately can result in coma and then sometimes it may also result in death. Okay, so this is the pathophysiology behind the acute cerebral edema, which is a component of the acute mountain sickness. Not only acute cerebral edema, there could be also something which is called as high altitude pulmonary edema. Again, the high altitude pulmonary edema, the basic reason behind this is hypoxia. So whenever there is hypoxia, what do you think is going to happen to the pulmonary vasculature? The pulmonary vasculature is different from that of the systemic vasculature and even its reaction to hypoxia is also different. So, whenever there is hypoxia, what is going to happen to the pulmonary vasculature? There is going to be vasoconstriction. But this vasoconstriction which is happening in the lungs or in the pulmonary vasculature, it is non-homogeneous. That means it is not equal in all the parts of the lung. Only few parts there is vasoconstriction and other parts there is no vasoconstriction. So, when few parts are having vasoconstriction, the blood from that area is going to enter into the other capillaries or the normal capillaries. So, when blood enters into the normal capillaries, what is going to happen? Again, there is an increase in the blood volume in these capillaries. So, whenever there is an increase in the blood volume in the, these capillaries, again, there is an increase in the capillary hydrostatic pressure.
Now when again there is an increase in the capillary hydrostatic pressure, same thing is going to happen. The fluid is going to here enter into the interstitial spaces. And this is what is causing HAPE, high altitude pulmonary edema. And because of this, what we get is dyspnea. That is difficulty in breathing. So remember, acute mountain sickness is having two important components. One is acute cerebral edema. Another thing is high altitude pulmonary edema. And I have explained you the pathophysiology behind the acute cerebral edema as well as high altitude pulmonary edema. Let's see what is the meaning of the word acclimatization. Acclimatization is the process by which individuals gradually adjust to hypoxia and they enhance their survival and performance and then for acclimatization to occur it is going to take a very long duration of time. Let's see what are the long term changes to this high altitude or what are the acclimatization features which occur in the body to the high altitude. There is going to be an increased RBC count. Why there is going to be an increased RBC count? Increased RBC count is because of again hypoxia. What does hypoxia does? Hypoxia is going to stimulate a hormone which is called as erythropoietin. And this erythropoietin is going to stimulate erythropoiesis. That's why there is an increase in the RBC count. Second thing is there is going to be an increase in the force of contraction of the heart. This is because of sympathetic stimulation which is occurring secondary to the hypoxia. Third thing is there is going to be a pulmonary hypertension. Why pulmonary hypertension? Because of the vasoconstriction in the pulmonary vasculature. Even though it is patchy, but it may result in pulmonary hypertension over a long period of time. Now, because of the pulmonary hypertension, the pulmonary artery is connected to the right side of the heart. The right side of the heart has to work more. So, this results in enlargement of the right side of the heart. Then there could be also an increase in the lung capacity because the person is hyperventilating. There is also hyperventilation. The stimulus for hyperventilation is again hypoxia. Why are the chemoreceptors? There is hyperventilation. So whenever there is hyperventilation, what is going to happen? Carbon dioxide from the body is washed out. Now when the carbon dioxide from the body is washed out, what is going to happen to the pH? The pH is going to increase. This results in respiratory alkalosis. Whenever there is a respiratory alkalosis, this respiratory alkalosis has to be compensated. So, what is it which is causing the compensation? The compensation is coming from the kidney. And how kidney is compensating for the respiratory alkalosis? By excreting more amount of bicarbonate. Okay, so once more amount of bicarbonate is excreted, it is bringing back the pH to the normal. All these are compensatory mechanisms which are going on in the body at a higher altitude. Remember this important point. Then not only the changes are occurring in the system like respiratory system and the cardiovascular system, the changes are also occurring at the cellular level. So what are the changes which occur in the cellular level? There is an increase in the oxidative enzymes. And all these oxidative enzymes, majority of them are present in the mitochondria. So, there is an increase in the amount of mitochondria. Then there is an increase in the myoglobin. Because myoglobin is going to hold oxygen for a longer duration of time and with more affinity. And also there is an increase in the capillary density, a process which is called as angiogenesis. Not only that, the, the, the drive, the respiratory drive to the changes in partial pressure of oxygen and partial pressure of carbon dioxide is also going to reduce over a long period of time. And at last, what is going to happen to our, to our oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve? The oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve is going to shift to the right. Why do you think the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve shifts to the right? Initially, the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve shifts to the left. Why the shift to the left is occurring? Because of what is called as respiratory alkalosis. Just now I have discussed in the hyperventilation. But then this left shift is counteracted by increase in the production of DPG or to be more specific 2,3-diphosphoglycerate. So when increased 2,3-diphosphoglycerate is there in the RBCs, ultimately the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve is shifted to the right. 
initially the shift is to the left but finally the odc curve is going to shift to the right why the reason for the left shift because of respiratory alkalosis but respiratory alkalosis is neutralized by the kidneys by excretion of excessive amount of bicarbonate in the kidneys followed by this what is happening there is an increase in the level of 2,3 dpg in the rbc this counteracts the left shift and shifts the oxygen hemoglobin curve to the right so these are all the acclimatization processes which are going to occur now coming back to our question now can you tell what is your diagnosis okay the most important point here to remember here is that he was short of breath the patient arrived at the resort yesterday so there is only one day history so my diagnosis will be wrong if i just say high altitude sickness i have to be very specific so my diagnosis is acute mountain sickness okay it is acute mountain sickness what is the pathophysiology i have already explained two important thing one is acute cerebral edema which is ensuing because of this acute mountain sickness another one is called as high altitude pulmonary edema already explained what are the changes occurring in the body during acclimatization again i have explained so this is how we are supposed to approach to this question now i will be discussing two multiple choice question based on what i have explained try to answer those questions okay these were recently asked in your next and the need pg acclimatization does not include does not include hyperventilation it is there yes decrease in the concentration of 2 3 dpg in the rbc is this correct does not include no what is going to happen to the dpg concentration the dpg concentration is going to rise increase erythropoiesis of course because of hypoxia kidneys are going to excrete more of alkali of course this is a compensatory mechanism to counter the respiratory alkalosis looks very easy isn't it now one more question following acute respiratory response to high altitude there is normalization of the blood ph this mechanism is what is the telling is following acute respiratory response what is the acute respiratory response whenever a person ascends to the higher altitude acute respiratory response is hyperventilation and what does this hyperventilation does hyperventilation is going to cause a reduction in the carbon dioxide levels and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the body is going to reduce because of the carbon dioxide washout because of the hyperventilation now there is now because of reduction in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide there should be respiratory alkalosis now what the question says is there is normalization of the blood ph that means there is no respiratory alkalosis why is this mechanism occurring is it occurring because of increased erythropoiesis which leads to increased buffering by hemoglobin no is it occurring because of increased excretion of bicarbonate yes is it occurring because of increased level of 2 3 dpg of course there is increased level of 2 3 dpg but this is not the reason for bringing back the ph to normal so no is it because of retention of the bicarbonate no 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 so the correct answer is increased excretion of bicarbonate by the kidneys so if we have understood the concept behind high altitude sickness either it's a case based question and asking you to diagnose and write the pathophysiology of acute mountain sickness and then the acclimatization process you can answer that or if even if it is in the form of multiple choice questions like ask for your neat and next pg also you can answer okay hope i was successful in making you understand the concept behind high altitude sickness acute mountain sickness and acclimatization process if that's the case hit the like button share this video as much as possible and subscribe to my channel thanks a lot for watching this video